All right, real quick before we get into this video, there is a huge Young LA restock that went live yesterday and there's still a lot of stuff in stock. I'm gonna pop up a picture right here of everything with the pricing that you get with code Alex for 15% off. I'm gonna go check it out. My favorite items from this restock have to be joggers. I love the uh, the, no, the pump cover joggers. They're probably my favorite thing, but everything's pretty good. It's a solid restock, the black party shorts, all that. So check it out, let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Alex Hubank here uploading Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or sometimes it is slightly off schedule. We're still doing three videos a week no matter what. At the Elysium Gym, having a, not a special video. We've done this video before. How to grow a bigger chest. How I grew my chest from a flat chested little boy to a absolute double D magic pillow. What is it? Mad, the dude who makes the, the ads with the magic pillow, num pillow, pillow, you know what I'm talking about? Bro, what is it called? It's the sleep? Pillow. Huh? Pillow pet? No, it's not a pillow pet. I don't, what are you, people, I'm people, I'm hoping, I'm hoping people know what I'm talking about. Anyways, <sighs> wearing the super villain compression from Young LA. This is absolutely fire. These pants also restocked today. You guys are seeing this the day after today, so I don't know if they're still there or not. But these, just like the superheroes, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I on the package it said super villain. So I'm guessing it's just because it's a different, it's like a solid color instead of it being like different. But it fits amazing. And this one honestly feels like different material kind of than the other one. But it's still, it's, it's phenomenal. It's a good compression. It'll probably sell out instantly. Don't know exactly when they're dropping them yet. If I have a date, I'll upload it. Drop. I think the next Young LA drop is the Earthy Collection on the 20th. Anyways, going to be growing a bigger chest today, which I really don't even need a bigger chest. But giving you guys all the tips that I have used. And if I was like, literally, I'm going to think of anything under the sun that I could give. I actually recorded a chest workout on Twitch, like I think about a month ago. And I was giving all these tips. So I'm just going to put them into a YouTube video now. Drinking my pre right now. I'm just having pump currently. Uh, we're gonna do something where you kind of just warm up the chest again getting blood into it I talk about this all the time The most important thing is having a not the most important thing for hypertrophy is having a pump But if you want to activate your chest and feel like you're having a really really good workout I always gauge it by the pump and how I can activate that muscle tissue So for me, I do that by getting uh, pre-exhaustion movement out of the way in the beginning So we're gonna go pick a fly whether it's a cable fly a dumbbell fly I think today I'm gonna do a dumbbell fly because I like doing old-school stuff And I want this video to be more of what I did to grow it not what I do now So when I started training, I only did like dumbbell and barbell movements when it came from my chest and I always started off and finished off with dumbbell flies I used to superset before I went to a bench press I would superset a dumbbell fly to failure and then I'll go on the bench right away and start repping out on my bench which is a unique way to train you can't lift this heavy on the bench but it's still like for me just help me grow my chest so we're gonna start over here on the bench do some dumbbell flies pre-exhaust get some blood in that in that chest by the way everybody keeps telling me every single time I go through my snapchat mentions are like seeing what you guys are replying to me on snap everybody is always saying Alex can you please go on a bulk finally can you just start your bulk can you bulk what people don't know is i've technically been bulking because i've just been eating a whole lot of food and doing no cardio but i am dialing that back i do want to get a little bit leaner before i start yet it's too early to start the bulk i think i might start it maybe in like september or something like that but i will be bulking i know i say this all the time and i always talk about it and i never follow through but i generally believe that i've already tapped into the whole aesthetic vibe and i also think that on social media the whole aesthetic like craze is starting to go away and people are starting to like follow and like the more like heavy like big lifters bodybuilders so like i'm cool with going in that direction but i got to put on size obviously and i think that it would be unique for people or like a cool thing for people to see me naturally Try and put on more size as a natural lifter who's already had so many years under his like weight like his belt of like training so i wanted to maybe do four videos a week moving forward once i start the bulk and have an extra episode on the weekends that is going to be a bulk only um series basically which is me showing you guys exactly what i'm eating in the day how i'm training what i'm doing what not to uh try and gain size so i generally believe that i could add another five to ten pounds of muscle tissue to my to my frame naturally so yeah it's enough talking so chest flies we're gonna do flat usually i do incline everything but i'm feeling flat right now on these the way i do these is almost a little bit of a variation between a press and a fly because I'll, I'll go pretty heavy on these even for my warm-up pre-exhaustion sets and the biggest thing that I love about these, just the way that it allows you to open up your chest, like no fly lets you open up your entire upper body the way a, a dumbbell fly will. Like I'm not in that fly stance, I'm just opening right here and I feel a crazy stretch in my upper chest and everything already just holding it down in this movement. So all I'm gonna do is shoulders gonna be kind of back into a position where they're not compromised. And when I say it's like a variation of a fly and a press, I'm not going all the way out here where it's like really hard on my shoulders. And then I'm also not pressing and I'm going in kind of in between. I'm like right here. I feel the stretch in my chest. I let my neck come forward a little bit, really feel it in my upper pec stretching right here. And I kind of turn the, uh, see how the dumbbells come out here and at the top, I turn them towards each other, almost like my pinkies are trying to come together. I don't know why I do that, but I feel like I get a better contraction. Again, bodybuilding is all about the stretch and the contraction. It's not about throwing around weight. It's about making sure that you actively activate uh, the tissue that you're trying to activate. Uh, 
good form. Started off pretty exhausting. We did three sets on that bench. Really, like the, I'm gonna call it the fly press variation because I'm, I'm going heavy. I'm doing 50s, but it's not like a completely extended fly. It's like a middle between where you're getting the strength of a press, but you're getting the stretch of a fly at the same time. Love doing those. I already have the gnarliest pump on my chest specifically. If you're trying to grow like this outer part of your chest, like this part right here, I feel like that type of fly, I really feel it in that area. So now we're gonna do a bench press. Now, when it comes to building a bigger chest, I'm really big on prioritizing your upper chest to get that front delt tie in. When you have a really big I'll need a picture of me doing a side chest. You'll see to build that shelf, you get a big front delt and a big upper chest, and it leads into this like more, it's just, it makes you more aesthetic. It goes with like your collarbone and it makes you look top heavy, which is what we all want. So in order to do that, I recommend prioritizing, prioritizing incline dumbbell presses or uh, preferably over barbell because with the dumbbell, you know that you're hitting equal load on both arms. You're not gonna have a bigger pec because you're, each side of your body is hitting the same weight. If you have a strong side and a weak side, <coughs> sometimes if you're hitting a barbell press, you might take advantage in that strong side and like end up pushing a little bit more on one side than the other. So I recommend doing dumbbell. Also, you just get a better stretch overall. You can already tell when you do a dumbbell press, I can go way farther down than a barbell because it's going to hit my chest and stop, especially if you have a big ass chest like your boy right here. Don't get the craziest range of motion on a barbell press. Barbell presses do have their place in time, 100%. You can load more weight onto the bar at once. You can track progressive overload that way. And honestly, going for really like high benches and stuff is honestly just a fun way to train. So it also comes down to priority, not priority, preference. I do start with the P, but yeah, my, I have such a good pump right now that my, my blood is not in my brain, it's in my chest. So yeah, so I'm gonna do some dumbbell bench pressing now. My chest is already fired up a little bit, already got blood in there as you can tell. So now when I go to do my pressing movements, I will feel my chest fire up and it will fatigue before my front delt does. I know a lot of people when they're training, uh, their chest specifically or benching, they're like, yo, why do I only feel this in my, in my shoulder, not my chest? Try doing the pre-exhaustion stuff, try doing a cable fly or something before you go into your, your pressing movement. And I guarantee you now, when I go into this, I will feel my chest fire a lot more and it's going to fatigue a lot quicker than the rest of my body. The only downside of pre-exhausting is that you won't be able to press as much weight, but honestly, when it comes to bodybuilding, you really want to be connected to the muscle that you're training, and I found that, for me, pre-exhaustion helps out the most. All right, so I'm sure if you guys have been watching, like, TikTok at all, or you're living underneath the rock, you would, you would not, you would know Shizzy, right? So, he's been popping up on social media recently, and I've been talking quite a bit. He's, I think, 6'4", 240 pounds, claims natural. I genuinely believe that he's natural. He got jumped the other day. I called him asking about it by three different people. They stabbed him in his head, his chest, and I think his leg. And he went to the gym to hit chest the same day after it. And, like, has the biggest, like, you saw it, right? Did you see it? And like, I don't know, bro. Some people are just different like that. But uh, yeah, we'll probably end up making a video with him here soon. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I, that's like one dude, if I see a 6'4", 240 pound male out of a car, the last thing I'm gonna be thinking is to go jump him, even if I have two other people with me. Like, I don't know, if you're gonna pick anybody to jump, like, why would you pick the freaking biggest guy in the car possible city? It's crazy. No music. No music? Oh, no. Strength. Have you forgotten what they said to us? What they did? So now that we finished the main mass movement, which is gonna be the movement where you track progressive overload. Now, what is progressive overload? There's three primary drivers when it comes to the muscle hypertrophy, which is the process of building muscle tissue, which is gonna be mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. Now, mechanical tension, I'm pretty, I, I believe, I'm not, a, I'm not a freaking scientist, bro. Do not even listen to me at this point. But mechanical tension is the most important driver when it comes to muscle hypertrophy. It's going to be basically ex executing or 
exerting the maximum amount of force on your muscles at a time. So when you're like movements that have a lot of mechanical tension, ten, blah, 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 mechanical tension would be like a dumbbell bench press or a barbell bench press because you're lifting the most amount of weight, you're recruiting the most amount of muscle fibers. So the whole process of uh, progressive overload is I max out, go to failure for six reps with the 100 dumbbell, the 100 pound dumbbells this week, and then let's say next week I try to do the hundreds again. Let's say I get seven reps. That counts as progressive overload. You write that down, dial it in. If you only get five, that sucks. Try again next week. If you still get five and you're actually getting weaker, that means you got to either increase your calories or you know look at your recovery schedule, drink more water, things like that. Um, but if it's going up, let's say you get seven the next week. Let's say you, after the week after that you get seven again. That's good. Maybe the seven was a little bit easier. That still counts as progressive overload. Next week you get eight, so on and so forth, until you get to a point. I believe you should up the weight after you get to like ten reps. If I hit ten reps now with the hundreds, then I'll be like, all right, now I'm gonna go with the one tens, and then I'll probably only get like six with them. Keep repeating that. That's the process of building muscle tissue, mechanical tension getting stronger and stronger over time, progressive overload. So basically got that main mechanical tension, progressive overload movement out of the way. Now we're gonna be going to a machine loaded bench press where I'm gonna focus mainly, not as much on the weight, but the execution of every single rep. Make sure that I'm squeezing and contracting my chest as hard as humanly possible. You might have to drop the weight a little bit, but for me, this is the main hypertrophy, just straight up mind muscle set. So there's a few tips I wanna give you guys here um, on this though. All right, incline machine press. So key here, this is crucial. I wish I had a flat press because I could execute it more on here. You need to use your scapula, all right? Again, I'm not a scientist, but I'm telling you the more amount of range of motion you have in a movement, I believe the more amount of muscle you're gonna build. No half rep in is gonna build your muscle, full range of motion. Now, when you train your chest, your scapula should be moving. A lot of like powerlifting coaches and shit who just want you to lift a hell amount of weight will tell you when you're on a bench press or when you're on a machine like this, keep your chest hella high and up, keep your shoulders all the way back, keep them in the same spot and just press like this. And yeah, you might be able to push more, more weight, but your shoulder is meant to like move in a plane, like your scapula, right, is meant to move like this, like I can go all the way back, but then I can also, without extending or bending my arms, I can push my entire body forward, and I'm just using my scapula. And this movement of me rolling it forward, rolling my scapula, pushing it forward, is activating my chest. My chest is flexed here. I can pull it back, it's not really that flex. I can push it forward, and I'm not even like trying to press or anything. I'm just pushing my scapula forward, I'm getting a, contra a contraction in my chest. So a lot of people, when they're training pressing movements, they keep their shoulders back, and now they're gonna bench press, like a, like a one rep max, and they keep it back here the whole way. You're still gonna get chest activation, you're still gonna build a bigger chest this way. Way. But for me, what I recommend doing is drop the weight a little bit. All right, we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna keep my elbows decently close to my body, not like flared out all the way up here, a little bit tucked. And I'm going to try and activate moving my scapula here. This is if your shoulders are backing down, you can get an extra squeeze, rolling them forward. You see how much more range of motion I just got doing that? My chest activated even more. Back, pushing it forward. So when I'm going to this press now, I'm letting my shoulders come back and down. And at the top, I start to move my scapula forward and I'm getting more of a stretch. It's the same concept on cable flies. I'm just showing you guys this whole, you can move your scapula when you train chest. So the way I see a lot of people do this, they keep their shoulders back and down like they're about a freaking one maximum maximum bench press and they're like hunched like this. Yeah, I'm doing a fly, I feel it, but my shoulders are back, right? I'm gonna bring them forward now and I'm gonna scoop that. Do you see the difference? Do you see it? You see the difference? This contraction is crazy. You can maybe see my lats even a little bit when I do it this way. Here, to versus here. Do you see the difference? This is bad, bad, good, good. Understand? So basically what I'm trying to teach you guys is it is good to use your scapula when you're benching. So that way, if you already are doing your cable movements like that, where you're letting it come forward, try letting it come forward in a pressing movement. Now, if you're going for a one rep max, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend keeping your shoulder more stable, but if you're really trying to focus on hypertrophy and you're training like a machine press, let don't be afraid of letting your shoulder come that extra inch forward by pushing your scapula forward. You just get a better contraction that way. That's how your shoulder, your upper back is meant to move in like a fluid motion with like your chest and everything. It's not meant to like the same exact position the whole entire time. All right, 
Next tip on the list is going to be something I used to do all the time. And this is not optimal, honestly. This isn't even like, this is how I grew my chest. FST7 fascia stretch chaining developed by Hani Rambody. Actually, I uh, see bomb doing this, I believe, for the last Olympia. Now, what this is, you can either start with it or most people finish with it. I used to always finish with it on cables. What it is, is you're gonna pick an isolation movement. We're gonna be doing a cable fly. It's seven sets, 30 seconds of resting in between each set. And in between those sets, you're gonna be flexing, stretching your chest, different things. Basically, is to get the most amount of blood in the tissue as possible to stretch the fascia. Now, this is not scientific whatsoever, but this type of training style is really fun and you finish off with a cracked pump. So you're gonna pick a weight, you can do a clean 12 whatever reps with. Again, we're doing it the right way, letting my sky click come forward. Squeeze and then I'm gonna stretch. I'm telling you, craziest pumps ever. And I get this like, I swear, like I don't know if this, this stuff science related, but do that seven times. Faster stretch training, FST7. Uh, when I started training, when I was like 16, 17, I watched a bunch of Jeremy Buendia, which I hope I'm making a video with him soon. I actually did hit him up, I think he's in San Francisco. Jeremy Buendia was my favorite bodybuilder back then, and I saw him do it all the time. So that's where I got it from. But try that shit, I'm telling you, I can't even talk. All right, next up on the list is going to be dips. Body weight dips, weighted dips, whatever. I like to finish off with body weight dips. I do not see enough people doing dips anymore in the gym. It is a overlooked exercise, but I think it is the best for developing your lower chest. I think it's your lower chest, yeah. As long as you do them right, you lean forward a little bit, you'll see in the way that I do them. Yeah, I love body weight movements, even pull-ups are back. Uh, I started working out off the of calisthenics only. Didn't even touch a weight for the longest time, so for me, push-ups, dips will always hold a close place in my heart. I'm gonna do some triceps here in a little bit. Craziest chest moment of my life, bro. I'm telling you, if you guys will do the flexing between set stuff, Flexing between your sets, your working sets when you're training for hypertrophy, you will have the nastiest pump of your life and you will feel your chest stretch and contract like none other. Like I had the craziest pump just now. Flexing between sets on the cable flies and just standing normal, like sitting up, I, I could feel so much blood in my upper chest that it was like, I was tight. Like it was, I couldn't stretch it even more. There was so much blood just trapped in there. That's how I like to train. If I'm going for building a muscle to make it bigger, we just see how much blood I can force into that area and then just train hard while all the blood's in there. So other small little tips, honestly, when it comes to training this like this is have a good intro workout when i say intro workout something that has fast digesting carbohydrates as well as an amino acid formula with some hydration stuff um it's going to help a lot just because it's going to help with the overall fullness of your muscle belly and like it'll it'll shuttle carbs and glycogen and fill you out like crazy during your lift which i don't even have right now. i don't even have an intro workout in me you know if i did my pump would be even probably doubled off of that so invest into a good intro workout that has fast digesting carbs and aminos <sighs> what else can i give tip wise for chest again bro over at the end of the day uh kill your ego you don't have to ego lift. It's always, like everybody always comes up to me and they're like, yo, Alex, how much do you bench press? And I'm like, I don't know, 300 or something. And like everybody thinks I can bench like so much more than that. And I rarely ever bench press heavy. Like I don't bench press heavy basically at all. And I have a big ass chest. So size of your muscle tissue doesn't directly kind of like relate to how much you can bench. I just know how to train my chest and I have good genetics for it. So yeah. Just got back from Whole Foods, um, so I'll show y'all a quick grocery store haul. Pineapple, good for pre-workout or to aid in digestion. If I have a big meal, have a few pieces of that. Got a bunch of these drinks up top, prebiotic sodas and iced teas, sparkling iced teas. We have egg whites, we got eggs, pasture-raised eggs here. Coconut water, which is my favorite for just hydration. We got some pasta, some ravioli, which I'll probably try making some of. Don't know how to cook, so that will be interesting when I go to make that. We got, I got three filet mignons. Um, Got that in here, probably make that tonight or tomorrow. Uh, organic chicken breast will be for a good meal. I uh, got a bunch of ground bison, you guys already know, on the ground bison wave. If you're not on the ground bison wave yet, you're missing out. It tastes way better than ground beef. 90% uh, or 90% lean, 10% fat on that. Got some wild caught smoked salmon as well. Do these small little yogurts just for snacks whenever I get hungry. Pasta sauce, we got bread. Just wanna make, if I make some protein French toast. And honestly, I think that was it. Really wasn't anything crazy. Oh, I got a bunch of this rice. These basmati rice, the ones that you microwave. I like microwavable rice, so. Got that, Basmati. I think I do that or Jasmine. I never know the difference between them, but yeah, it's pretty much all we got. It was like $300 though. Whole foods be expensive, but um, about to go do cardio. It is later in the day, had a late start. It's my grandmother. Say hi. How are you doing? 
just help cleaning up the house right now. Um, so yeah, probably gonna go do some cardio, knock it out 30 minutes. I haven't done cardio for the last month straight, so I have to start dialing it back. I don't know how I'm still like maintaining a pretty good lean physique because I have not been doing any cardio and have not been tracking my diet at all. So like I had Kyle hit me up. He was like telling me to send a check and I was like, I have not started like being consistent yet. So give me like one more week to dial it in. Uh, I just got back from New York and then I'll be, should be chilling. Just gonna go do cardio, get back on schedule. Bro, y'all see this whiteboard? I don't know if you can see it. There's so much stuff on here that we're working on over the next few months, especially the Discord. So I'm excited on that. I'll have more on that probably in this video. But yeah, I'm gonna go do cardio and then I'll show you all what I get end up eating and then training later today. All right, so we got some, we got some new samples in. So I'm excited to go over these ones. I personally like this a lot. It's a different vibe. So first off are the shorts. I love these shorts. They're just super stretchy and they just fit really well. I'm pretty sure they're, these are called double liner. Is it double liner? Yeah. Double line. And they have like this cool little, what's this called? Like a fuzzy patch. I don't even know how to, what it's called. It's Chanel, Chanel patch. This is Chanel pad shorts. So these are tough. I love this color, this colorway as well. Um, and then we kind of did the same thing. What, what I'm curious, which I want to know from you guys, I have off the pop of a picture, you know, the pink one we got with the puff print. Would they like the Chanel patch or the puff print more when we go to order the hoodie and joggers? Let me know what you guys think. I'll have to do a side by side. This is a Chanel patch, right? So it's like a fuzzy little patch. Here's the hoodie version of it. And these come in sets. These are super comfy. Um, that looks really good. So we have them. And then we have the puff print, which like is like a 3D comes off of the hoodie a little bit more like in the pink one. I'll have, to, I'll have to pop up a picture of what the looks like. So let me know. I kind of like the Chanel patch more. Let me know down below in the description. But y'all, I mean the comments. This one's dope. These are hard. These look These came out good. These are soft. Huh? They're very soft. Yeah, you, you can't. We, we did a lot of sampling on these. This is this is definitely the softest like loungewear set. So we'll probably be dropping these ideally around fall time, like when football starts up. Um, and then I'll figure out what colorways we're gonna do. We'll probably drop them like a few different colorways and sets, but I love wearing stuff like this in the fall. It's just one color. It's just a vibe, super comfy. Yeah, and the shorts are also pretty cool. This is a cool addition to it. Let me know what y'all think down below. Right. Guys, big news. All right, this has been in the works for a long time, investing time, money, resources into this. We basically, I have a Discord with over 40,000 members, right? And it's been like a really good platform for people to like interact when it comes to fitness and whatnot. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to like the scale this thing like crazy. I wanna make something that's so dope for, if you're like a male age, 13, 23, whatever, like I wanna make this perfect for you. There's so, so many of y'all who I know have just not reached your like best self yet. Like there's so much more that you're meant for and so much more for you, for you to do, but a lot of people just need guidance to get to that point. Like I, basically I'm putting everything into the server that I wish I had when I was like a 16 year old kid and I would've been able to accomplish everything in my life in half the amount of time if I knew all these things. So basically what we're doing is we're building the server, having a, we have, obviously have the free section to get interact people meet people whatnot what but we're having a paid section that's going to be focused literally on just basically leveling yourself up financially spiritually mentally and physically which are the four main things that a male should be able to just master in all aspects and constantly trying to achieve a better better like self with so if you're not at that point in life and you want to be somewhere different or you know that you're meant for more then this is basically going to help be help be there for you to kind of guide you to that point so an example we have channels for mental health for finance for education we're going to have different things like having uh the various books that you should be reading and then like ideally what i want to do is i want to change these things and I'm gonna be extremely active in it, but change it every single month. So there'll be a new topic to talk about. We have philosophy. So like maybe one month we're gonna be talking about stoicism and then one book we're gonna be talking about like Robert, Robert Greene's The Laws of Human Nature, like that book. And then going over what that book is about how you can apply it to your own life that will allow you to level up physically, spiritually, mentally, financially. Because again, bro, it's so key. Everything starts with mindset. If you go back to my first pictures on my Instagram, you can do it right now. Read my captions. I had no money, no clout, nothing back then, but it all started in my mind and I knew I was meant for more and I started opening myself up to these things. I started reading books. I read like the the law, uh, I forgot, 40 Laws of Power. I read Thinking Grow Rich and these different books and, and changing my mindset, listening to motivational speakers, listening to people who are better off than me. And look what happened in my life. Like back then, read those. I had like the be something like Polo G quotes. I had like, like read the captions on those pictures and you'll see that I had that mindset that I knew I was meant for more. Even though I didn't have it yet, I already believed that I had it. And then look where we're at now. Now I'm helping people try to have that same mindset. So I'm so pumped and hyped for this, bro. Uh, I don't have an exact drop day yet. It should be done here soon. We've been working on it again, putting a lot of time, effort and money into it. Uh, it's gonna be a huge thing. We're gonna have a thing for like weekly calls. You'll be able to interact with me a bunch. I'll be in there. I literally gonna make this like a big part of my life. I wanna be in it all the time because with this platform, influence I have. I want to make a huge impact given given this time that I have now where I'm popping and, and I can have this influence. I want to use it in a positive way that generational impact, like generational wealth, generational impact and everything is, is what I kind of hope to have with this. So we have some things we'll have one-on-one -on -one contact with me. Literally it's going to be insane. I'm so pumped, but yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll have a drop day hopefully here soon. 
All right, back in the uh, the office. So uh, I was trying to think about what else to talk about in this video, like things that we have coming in. So got a bunch of Elysium designs that we finally got back that we're picking between what we're gonna be using. And we have a big drop finally coming in. It's been in the works for I think two or three months, uh, like the Samurai collection that should be coming in, dropping maybe some of it on Friday, if not this Friday, next Friday. And then we have a bunch of more stuff just consistently coming in. The hardest part with the whole clothing brand stuff was to make sure that we were ahead of time. With going overseas, you to be working like three months ahead of time on everything um, but we have a bunch of like hard ass designs coming in and then I also uh, got some like new designers on the team working on some stuff so really excited to show you guys all of that so there's an alpha line flash sale going on today if you guys want to get I believe it's uh, rip factor you get for free if you get superhuman test or uh, superhuman muscle you get a free rip factor which is like two things I've been taking recently uh, the superhuman test is a natural testosterone booster basically it's gonna have stuff like boron ashwagandha vitamin D zinc things that your body should be taking in in. Um, it's going to help basically just boost its natural production of testosterone. So it's completely natural. And then there's a muscle builder, which I'll take, which is just an anti-catabolic type of formula uh, to just increase an anabolic type of environment in your body as much as you can. So if you order any of them, you get a free rip factor, um, which is cool. Put Alex again, will give you 15% off. That's going to be live for like two days. So I got my testosterone results back and I don't know if I should talk about in this video or not. This video is gonna be the, the chest video, how to grow a bigger chest. Maybe we can do it in the next one, but my, my testosterone results came back and, and I wanna make a video on it. I've been talking about making a video on it and I'm just worried that when I make a video on it, like I'm just gonna get a bunch of people reacting to it and being like, yo, how did he have low tests? And then now his test is like high. So, but I wanna wait cause I'm getting it retested again because I like generally, even my doctor like was like, it probably shouldn't be this big of a difference just from me eating like food and stuff. Cause I was obviously restricting myself heavily when I had it tested a while back when it was really low and then I basically just stopped restricting myself intuitively started eating whatever I want took a lot of testosterone boosting supplements like the test boost like the natural test booster upping my vitamin d3 like crazy eating a lot of like cholesterol fatty foods to help kind of just reset my hormones which obviously looks like it worked based on what my blood work looks like I have it right here on the screen I just don't want to show y'all yet I think I'm gonna wait to, I think I'm gonna wait to show y'all it's still in the natural range so like it's still in the natural range it's nothing like not natty which is good but I definitely feel better um eating at this body like you can tell right now my body fat that i'm at like i'm eating literally whatever i'm probably like 13 percent body fat oh again i like yo-yo diet a lot so i'll go from being like 10 percent after i heavily diet and do cardio and then i'll like usually go on a trip binge eat for like two weeks straight and get back up to like 13 and then i repeat the process uh so right now i'm in the process of trying to get shredded to get like one more time i want to get shredded get a lot of content while being lean it's good for you know snapchat it's good for making money on all those other platforms being shredded and then i'm gonna start a, a bulk series legitimately do it the right way i'm gonna have kyle coach me um he's probably already annoyed with me because i've been lacking on getting lean we'll dial it in maybe we'll do a video on going over the blood work stuff another time we'll see that's pretty much it though code alex young la alpha line flex pro and celsius i will see you guys on monday sorry about the lack of the upload schedule being right we're still doing the three videos a week i just need to get back on the monday wednesday friday so i'm gonna go upload these clips of the editor to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible again the young la restock happened the other day big ass young la restock so if you guys want to go check that out show some love